Okay, so my name's Godfrey Nolan. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, some QG stuff that we did over the last while. Um, it's kind of a little bit of a story, so I'll, I'll tell you the story as I go along. So uh, I work for a company called Resell LC. We're based out of Detroit, Michigan, just north of Detroit. But of course, post-COVID, we're in 13 states. All our developers are all over the place. We're about 60 people. We um, are a software company um, doing services for lots of different drone applications, mostly fleet management apps. So, um, you know, the kind of things that you see around. Um, a lot of the apps that if you're um, on the DJI or Pirate space, you probably use some of our work. So we, we um, done a lot with DJI, Pirate and Mavlink, or Mav SDK. We've done a lot with that. And um, as we were going around to the conferences, we started getting more requests for QGC. So basically what I wanted to start look at was uh, how we could start doing some QGC stuff. So in the, um, in the DJI and Pirate space, uh, they have, we did a lot of work making their tutorials a bit more useful. So um, they have like their original tutorials are in Objective-C and they're in Java. So we converted them to Kotlin and to Swift. And for Parrot, um, we basically took what DJI did and then tried to transfer them over to um, similar for Parrot. So we have that for the old Anafi. So we have those in, um, same again, Kotlin and Swift. Started doing a lot of work on Mavlink SDK, on Mav SDK, and then Q ground control is already there. So like the stuff that's in the um, the, uh, the tutorials. And the reason I want the tutorials is because we have a ton of interns. And I also, I teach at a number of universities around the Southeast Michigan area. Um, so usually it's Android, it's Kotlin, but I actually have a drone software um, class that I'm teaching in the fall. So I'm really looking forward to it. But I was trying to find how could I get some uh, PX4 stuff in there? So for the tutorials that are out there, the type of thing that you do is um, set up a, uh, the map using Mapbox or Google Maps or whatever, set up the media manager, set up the, um, the video, set up uh, mission planning. You get that with Q Ground Control. So we were trying to look for what could I do with Q Ground Control that I could teach people to start getting into QML and um, eventually getting into the C++ stuff. So I have the two examples that I have, the first one we did, we threw up because we uh, onto the, uh, a blog, um, put the code out there. We're trying to make this as um, uh, give to as much out to the community as we can, same as way as we do with the DJI and Pirate stuff. It's much easier for us because we're a services company. We're not a product company. So we basically um, put a lot of this stuff out there. So we had been, uh, oh, and there's another thing as well I forgot to mention. What we were trying to do is I'm trying to create um, a larger community and a not just a once or twice a year community. So we created a meetup group. So there's a drone software meetup group that's out there. Um, currently, it only has 100, um, uh, 100 members. But if you want to do, if you want to look at that, I have the links at the end. Um, basically, we just talk about uh, different drone topics every month. So we've gone through um, like an overview of all the different SDKs. We've gone through. Um, a lot of the tutorials, um, and it's kind of, it's a good deadline for us to try and get stuff going. Um, so if anybody's any interest and wants to do a talk on anything specific, I'm, I'm fed up talking myself, so I'd be very happy if other people talk too as well. We had a couple of guest speakers, so if anybody wants to do some guest speaking, that'd be cool too as well. So I'm kind of looking for like 10 things that I want to do on QGC to get a tutorial going, um, the same as what we've done for the for the other SDKs. So the first one we did was to hide settings. So um, we got asked a couple of times. So there is, um, so it's a how-to guide. So basically how to configure and build your own custom QGC, Q ground control application. Um, and then it basically walks you through uh, something very simple. Hopefully this will play. Will that play? No, it doesn't play. Um, okay, let me go back. See if I can get this going. Oh, and I don't have internet. That's what it is. Crap. Okay. Well, we'll just ignore that for the moment then. Um, I'll try and get it at the end if I have any time. But essentially what you have is... Well, I'm having all sorts of stuff going on here now.
bear with me. Okay, so you can't really see this, but and I, I'm, I'll see if I can get the internet. But essentially what this does is it has, um, we got asked by uh, Terraview, I think that's who it was. I think they're gone now. They don't exist anymore. But they, what they wanted was something very simple. There's like this, every, you can do everything in QGround control, okay? You can set all the settings, you get all the parameters. So what we wanted to do is just have like um, three different hard-coded um, passwords. So like the basic user and then there's um, a uh, uh, somebody who's going to maintain the machine and then there's a factory um, user. So there's three basic users and we just show how to go through bit by bit so that you can um, uh, understand how QT, how QT works within the environment of QGround control, how you can set up the environment for yourself um, and then how you can go in and start edi editing the um, QML so you can get everything working. It really does not like this. So the second effort that we wanted to do was um, we got asked by another customer. So uh, this is basically having an, an orbit mode. And you can do an orbit mode in, um, in QGC, but we wanted to have uh, the yaw offset. So the pilot can use a slider to adjust the yaw offset, yaw offset of the vehicle in relation to the centroid. So it's always pointing at the same place. This offset can be changed during flight um, while the orbit mode. And then um, you'll see on the next slide when I show you the your slider that the uh, um, in QGround control. So basically, what we're doing is we're we're editing the uh, the uh, the user interface and adding two sliders, and then that just allows the pilot to adjust the yaw um, while they're running through it. Um, so this is. We did two versions. We did one which just works on Android phones. It was pretty easy to do. Um, and then we made the mistake of deciding to, well, actually, that's not fair. We decided that we'd do it on Herelink, and we really didn't have a lot of Herelink experience. So um, what I wanted to do is to give you um, all of the gory detail. Um, and I'm not going to go through it today, but I do have all the links and all the information if you want to, um, to go through it yourselves. But basically, what you can have here, you'll just see it in the corner is that we have these two sliders. So these sliders allow you to, um, to change the yaw. We have the orbit mode going, um, but we can just make sure that it's, that it's always pointing. Um, there's a yaw offset of, I think we gave it plus or minus 15 degrees when the drone is orbiting. Um, and as well as uh, adding the functionality to create an orbit centered around the drone's current position and displaying the orbit radius to give the information back to the user. So I'm really hopeful that this next one works. Come on. Okay, I'll show you what it works, what it looks like. So you can see we just have the here link there, um, arming the drone, and then um, it's connected to the simulator. This is, I believe it's gazebo running in the background. We uh, learned a lot when we're doing this. Um, certainly a Linux computer is definitely the, the way to go. If you're trying to get this to work, we did get it to work on the Mac. Um, Windows didn't have a lot of success over the period of time that we tried to configure everything. So um, if you're going to be doing any uh, modifications to QGround Control, um, recommendation would definitely be on the uh, to use a Linux box. Okay, let me get this back again. Okay, um, so what do we have to do? So, okay, right here, I'll show you in a second if I can get it. So you have to set up the environment. Um, we're Android devs, so we're software guys. We're not really hardware guys. Um, we're not QML guys, we're not QT guys. Um, so we basically were trying to figure out how to put it all together, but I think it's, it's useful for people um, if you've never done any um, editing on QGround control just to see how it all fits together. Um, our, there's just a show of hands. Has anybody written any custom um, QML, QGround control apps. Here we go. I'm not surprised the Altarian guys have. Yeah, a couple. Um, I found that the tutorials are a little bit, uh, they go from, um, you've got the basic setup, but then there's kind of a gap when really that's what we're trying to fill here. We're trying to uh, show the, you know, the next kind of 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to ten, if we can get there, of all the different things you can do. I really liked the talk, yes, the talk earlier today, which was about the follow me. So that's probably one that we'll add later on um, to, uh, to our list of things. So essentially what you do is you create two, um, two new XML files. Um, I think actually that should be QML files. Um, all of this code is available. I've left it out there if you want to play with it. Um, I haven't, I've, um, on purpose, I've just given you the files. I haven't given you the repo. So the idea here is that you take the files and you would um, uh, take a, um, download the clone, the existing Q ground control, and add those files so you can see how they all fit together. Because I think I always find that when I give it to students, when I just give them the repo, that they're not really learning how it all fits together. So um, in the repo um, up on GitHub, it's basically, it's all the different fi files. So we created our own slider. So the slider, um, the two, the horizontal and the, vir the vertical slider, that's just what you saw in the, um, the image that I showed you. And then we have um, uh, the virtual joystick and the virtual joystick, there's already one there, but um, I'll go through the code just a little bit. It's basically trying to, uh, it's the map that's behind uh, making sure that the yaw offset is correct and it's displayed correctly on the, um, on the, uh, on the user interface. Update the Android settings. Um, we're doing this in Herelink. Um, Herelink, if you've never um, written an application before, has got our, uh, because of the nature of what it is, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an Android device that is uh, showing drones flying in a, usually in a pretty bright area. So it's actually got a really large density pixel um, in comparison to other Android apps. So if you're an Android developer, you'll probably be a bit surprised the, because there's just so many pixels on the here link. Um, so that was one of the things that kind of messed us up. I'll show you what a, one of the lessons learned that we had. And then I'm um, trying to get the simulator to work. So, okay, that's not going to work. So in here, I have a link. Um, so if you download it, I gave you, gave you the PowerPoint in, the, in the, uh, the session. So if you go to the session, I have the entire PowerPoint. It has um, a list of all the things that we had to do to set up the custom ground control. So let me get out of this for a second. Okay, so here's the code. Um, just some basic maths to make sure that, you know, um, some, it's an orbit, it's a circle. It's, uh, we took this and I have the resource that we took it, to, took it from. Um, just to make sure that it's, you know, it's, it's pointing in the right direction. Out here you can see all the different files that I have. Um, the one that I wanted to show you for healing, healing. So we do have a um, PDF. Okay, so basically walking you through how to set up the environment, um, Visual Studio we're using, install Qt Creator if you've never done it before, um, Android Studio, how to get the NDK, which is the native developer kit. So that's what you need if you're doing any C++. Um, and then there's lots in there about exactly what you need to do when you install Qt Creator, because there's a couple of um, things that will, if you've never done it before, that are kind of snafus. It's already in the how-to guide when you set up. Um, and then walks you through what you need to do. Install the PX4 tool chain. What you need to do to configure the project project in order to get it to work with Herelink. So we were pulling it from Kubepilot here. Build the environment. Um, creating the custom sliders. So now I'm walking through. So then uh, making sure that we have the sliders that they're going to be able to show together in um, QGC, uh, run uh, update QRC to make sure everything's going, what we're going to do to modify the user interface, um, and then uh, modifying the simulator. So we were using, we used two simulators. We used JMAVSIM to begin with, and then we used Gazebo afterwards. Um, to get Gazebo working together with a, uh, with the here link was kind of, kind of entertaining and I use entertaining in um, kind of a humorous way, but we basically, if you walk through this, here's what you need for your bash file. Um, here's what you need for um, the different paths that you're gonna need. So it's um, to make sure that when you run JMAPSIM, and then I also have an example for running gazebo that it will make your life easier for you. Okay. 
Let's go back to where I was. It's not working. Just a second. Get back to where I was. Okay. Um, so this was our Herelink setup. Um, so we have a laptop running Sittle software in the loop. We have the Herelink Air and the Herelink that's running the modified G, uh, QGC that we just had. Um, the uh, so in order to get that set up, so we needed to have our everything set up on Herelink, just um, getting up and running. Um, then we had to create fabricating a wire to connect the Herelink to the PixSock and the Herelink to the US uh, the USB serial converter. I have all that information again in here, which uh, I'll look at in a second. Um, you have to create your own cable, um, a fiddle cable. So we then set up and debug the tool chain for the PX4 uh, simulation with Gazebo. We set up the tool chain for development of the QGC Reese Herelink version. Um, and then basically go through, make sure that everything's okay, connect the Herelink to the SITL, uh, send messages back and forward, modify the Mavlink router setup to broadcast messages so Herelink QGC custom version could connect. Um, and then we started running into some of the issues that we had with QGC, um, was really badly scaled. Um, the code again is um, is up there on my GitHub repo, so that includes the code um, similar to what I just showed earlier on. We have the Windows setup, we have the Herelink setup. Um, so lessons learned. So the QGC changes took less time than expected. We really thought it was going to take us forever to do this, but the um, really it was. It wasn't difficult at all once you got your head around how um, uh, the QML works. We weren't doing any firmware changes. The first time that we did it, we did actually some firmware changes, but then found that we could do it strictly doing QML. So QML is essentially just a, uh, it's almost like XML files that you're editing in order to get um, the Q ground control to behave the way that you want it to do. The Herelink configuration took more time than expected. We did it originally with on an Android phone um, and that really didn't take long at all, but it was the Herelink trying to get that whole configuration together. Maybe because we're mostly software guys and not hardware guys, but that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk here to um, give you guys the PDFs that if you start to do this and start to run into this, um, we have all the descriptions, all the different pinouts, all the things that you need to do in order to create the cable um, so that you can do, do it yourself. And then um, uh, we did, it did, in, um, we had to target the large Android device, as Herelink, as I said, is a high-density pixel device. The way that you do that is within Android Manifest, is that you just basically say it's a large device, um, just as an attribute. It's just one of the things. So before, it kind of looked like this. You can see at the corner, it's, it's pretty ugly. And then afterwards, it kind of tidies itself up because um, Android realizes that you're... Um, that you're telling it what kind of device it is. It's kind of counterintuitive because it's not as large a tablet as you would, would expect it to be from the size of the Herelink. Okay, some um, resources. Uh, just have the GitHub repo with the yaw sliders, where we got the little mats that we used in our um, in the code that I was showing you. Uh, also put up the component hiding that I had. So that was if you want to um, set it up so that the uh, so that you have three different users if you don't want every any if you don't want somebody to be able to change parameters on a 15 grand drone and crash it um, at least you'll have uh, one way within Q ground control to be able to limit what access they have unless they have access to the password obviously it this is hard coded if they went look at the code they're going to know what it is um, but it was just a start to get something going I also put up the um, link to the meetup for the drone software meetup group um, so that's completely 100% online. We have people from uh, from uh, quite a few uh, users in Nigeria. We have people in the UK um, and then all over the US and Canada. So um, there's only 100 so far. If anybody has any interest and wants to talk more about drone software, um, if you have any, any um, ideas or any projects you want us to look at, more than happy to help. Okay, anybody got any questions? 
or points. How many people are, are hacking QML on a daily basis? No. Well, almost a daily basis. I almost got it. No? Um, I wish it worked with the QT creator, but uh, if anybody knows a way to get it in the QT creator, that'd be great. Because um, QT is used for lots of things. Um, it's used for many of the automotive dashboards that you see out there. Um, but you get a, uh, a drag and drop interface, like an old school VB type interface. Um, but for the um, for Q ground control, you're basically using QML files, which you just have to edit by hand, which is um, not optimal, but you get used to it. It's better than assembler. Okay. Um, nobody's got any questions. I guess that's it. Thanks very much. <laughs>